I think you can ask Rishi now. Uh, sorry, uh, viewers, uh, we got disconnected. There were some technical difficulties which uh, arose suddenly. Uh, so we sincerely uh, regret the inconvenience. Now that we are uh, uh, here back again and uh, we are missing our other co host, so she will be joining us soon. Uh, now that she was asking, and sorry, Joy, for the interruption, I would go ahead and ask you one more question. Like being an uh, ardent admirer of the Beatles, the Eagles, Simon, Sting, Beethoven, Mozart, and many more. Apart from the other, mu uh, other than the, them, you have also been an uh, admirer of Salil Chaudhary, Ilya Raja, Bhupen Hajarika. What are the work? What made you work on blend of this rock, soul, folk, and world beat music? Can you throw us some uh, highlight on that? I think the. Uh, there's a unique flavor to a northeastern and an eastern artist. Our music, uh, when you come in from the northeast and also from the east, I'm talking of Bengal onwards. There's a unique flavor to that music, which has, which is kind of, you find those melodies kind of very universal. At the same time, the, the, the there's a sense of being very local. I think it comes naturally to us. To some of our us musicians to kind of have a very different kind of mix going in the songs without even realizing it sometimes and especially when we layer those melodies onto a guitar or piano the mix becomes even more uh, there's even more variety to that mix in terms of in terms of a single melody i think we are just blessed with very unique song making and understanding uh, capabilities in the east it doesn't happen in the rest of india those and uh, uh, Ile Raja, Raja, we used to call Salil Chaudhary as the composer's composer. So he, he understood that art very well. He understood the speciality of the East. If you ask Rahman, I think Rahman, Mr. Rahman has always said that he considers Mr. R.D. Berman his favorite composer. Now, mm -hmm. R.D. Berman was almost, uh, I, I, R.D. Berman's ancestry goes to tribal people from Tripura. Wow. And uh, Sal Sal yeah. Yeah. and Salil Chaudhary, uh, being Bengali, he was also born in Assam. He was born in a tea garden in Assam. And R.D. Burman from Tripura. So I think this Northeast and, and Bengal, they have a very unique strength of creating melodies which is not present in the rest of India. So melodically. And, and that's why people who have listened, for example, Ile Raja who's heard so much of Salil Chaudhary and Rahman who's heard so much of uh, uh, R.D. Burman. And you know, and he considers a guru and the best, you would find them gravitating towards a, that kind of melody, which is very unique to our reasons. I think Rishi would also conquer with that kind of a, yeah. I think he will, you know, we have a very yeah. different song making skill and ability. Yes, you are right. I agree. No, even, you know, uh, you know uh, as you said, now I can also relate uh, these, the, your statement of, uh, you know, uh, about this uh, Eastern religion. It's true, it's true, even I, I realize that. Yeah, I think uh, even when I listen to sometimes a Ravindra Sangeet right now, and uh, there's a universal nature to the melody. You will not find a universal nature to that melody from a UP or a Bihar or Madhya Pradesh. They have their, they have their own things. Yes. But I'm speaking of the universal nature of a melody. Right. Uh, you know, for example, Bhupen Hazarika brought so much of Assam to Bengal, brought so much yeah. of Bengal to Assam, and took the best out of Assam and Bengal to the rest of India and to the world. Now, yeah. that is not only the greatness of Hazarika, but he was blessed to be born in a region which had which had universal genes. And uh, I, I I believe the Northeast and the East and Africa has it. Not many other parts. You cannot go to a oh Irish yeah Africa yes. Africa has it, you know, in terms of African folk music, you listen to music and you feel that it can blend in with everybody. It has that unique capability. Whereas an Irish or Scot Scottish piece of music, a Celtic piece of music feels like it belongs there. You know, it does, it's not easily fusible. It still sounds that way. So uh, I have never learned music uh, theoretically. I will, I, I don't have a theoretical explanation for this. But uh, all this is from the heart. Wow. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Yeah, my life. <laughs> all great musicians are like that. I'm sure because they grow as they go. Uh, now that we were talking to Joy, I'd like to have Rishi 
like best out of mumbai rishi is an indian singer and a music director <clears throat> the journey that started with uh, mandolin and performing and uh, at uh, air, uh, all india radios uh, and the, as a child artist what has been going on with your passion as a music since then <laughs> what has been going on that is that is that is what life has all been about you know <laughs> so life is music in a way uh yeah it's been a long uh, journey with a lot of variety with, with a lot of risks with a lot of uh, passionate bold set uh so it's been great and uh, i think i am staying young because of that <laughs> oh wonderful that's nice <laughs> <laughs> and in any way yeah, so any, is, yeah do you, you yeah you want to know the journey and like you little little story on the whole I, thing uh, we will come with you uh, in due course of time from your journeys but uh, yeah good to know that you are mm -hmm. still being young and music keeping you young <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah also i would like to add that i it was lovely to hear joy speaking i i'm seeing him meeting him for the first time and he was like really putting things very clearly and from a very deep level it was very enjoyable joy whatever he said Mm. Thank you, thank you, Rishi. I I think mm. we'll meet soon. <laughs> Conversation <Yes>. further. <laughs> cool, that'll be great. That'll be great. Okay. Yeah. And uh, now I'll go back to Joy once again. Now the you also uh, I think uh, what I could uh, remember that the best debut award you got in 2010 for your album Joy, looking out of the window at the Big Music Award for uh, Big 82.7 FM. what were the strengths jo singer joy was finding in his musical career and then growing from there and did not look back what was in your mind then in 2010 you know no i you know i i wanted to create music that you know i think this is the basic this is why we create music we create the songs that we haven't heard that we haven't stumbled onto there might be great artists so there are certain songs you like to hear that have not been created and uh, it could be a small song it could be a big song i'm not even talking of good bad songs there are certain kind of melodies songs overall structures that you want to create and that uh, is not there in this, any space so that is how you start creating and uh, what i thought was that you know it was not about creating songs i just wanted to be free this was never about i have to create x number of songs have x number of people music for me is like a very personal journey it's like a love story you know you know you like you love somebody so that when you love somebody it is not a for public judgment it's not whether the world will tell you okay somebody you love is beautiful or not or as good as they think or as not as good or this or that it's a very private relationship uh sometimes mostly actually and uh, to nurture that relationship and keep it going and make it more beautiful is what my personal journey is and it's also like when you have a wonderful relationship you want to explore the world with the relationship you want to see where you can go how you might have been to a place before but if you go with somebody you love you find that place acquires a different meaning for you that is what i do with my music now i go to places i find different things i i i i try to enjoy life with my music i try to find i try to learn i try to learn and it is a two way process it's a, like a it's a symbiosis i bring in things from there and i leave things behind That's and good. That I, 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 I feel free. Yeah, and it yes. must be enjoyable also, right? It is very enjoyable. I think I think I I, I live a very very exciting life. I think a lot of people get super jealous looking at what I do <laughs> and what I believe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I I I agree. I agree. Uh, yeah. So, uh, Joy, tell me uh, from two thousand three uh, with the song in uh, Munna Bhai MBBS. to lela majnu the recent one 
so uh, what has been the most satisfying uh, moment or period as a singer or uh, composer you see everything was when i started with munna bhai mbbs that was the time that was the first munna bhai mbbs and the and the movie had no songs so the movie producers the directors and the company universal was in a big fix as to how they promote the movie dekhle was a very slow song so uh -huh. so that was the first time the a bollywood movie decided to club mix its own song they movies didn't have club mixes in 2003 4 so this was the first time like remixes on their own would exist in a different space in an mtv of old songs current movies didn't have songs which were club mixed so universal had this whole idea of how let's let's turn it around in a fast club mix you know up tempo dance whatever you should you cho choose to call it mm -hmm. so there so there was a the company there was anumalik then there were the people who were working on the music and they decided that let's turn it turn this song take the vocals layer it on music and turn it into a fast dance number so that was step 1 step 2 how what do you pair this with they thought we should pair this with nice english vocals so they called me because i just stumbled into and they thought anumalik had heard my voice he thought this could make a difference and he was working with my mentor called jatin sharma so in the middle of the night jatin sharma was working on the track and he said why do to write a couple of lines and we sing so that that got my career started and and i wrote it in english so now it's not about lela majnu it's also how you start so it it gave me the faith that whatever i had learned so far in life was wrong because what put me into bollywood music was english music english lyrics oh. english set english sensibilities the the fact that i could understand pop the fact that i could understand rock i could understand dance music i could understand phrasing i could understand rhyming sentences i could write i wrote the whole lyrics so i could write write poetry whatever little i could write but i i at that point it was my first track in bollywood but i i realized that whatever i had learned in life up till then wasn't wasted it just got me an entry and it created a singular kind of thing there were not many people who were doing it at that point of time there was only me and two three other people who did what we did so that became a whole big uh, kind of a genre by itself singing in english <sighs> and uh, so it's like no learning goes in vain you just have to put your heart into it that's true i could yes. i could write the whole thing in half an hour i could create lyrics i had a sense of lyrics i had a sense of literature so there is no there is no learning that actually goes in vain and all you know everything from a cliff richard to a tina turner to an abba to a boniam everything factored into writing that so, small piece but uh, then you realize you know you when you want to start and when you want to love music just love it for whatever it is don't get segmented you know just have an open heart you will find what is good for you you will find what is your favorite but just yeah. be open you know uh, uh, yeah just, i mean i like I would, the you know one music. one more one more thing i would really like to add here and i think even rishi would agree because when we grew up in assam the sort of music i was listening to like for example my pop and the rock and everything like out of 100 people there were probably three or four people who would listen to it but that didn't put me off it kind of put me in a space where i thought actually oh i'm listening to something nobody else is listening i thought actually i was ahead of time i i could have been right i could have been wrong <laughs> but that's love what you love does it doesn't mean that 100000 people have to love what you love so if you love something it makes it makes my life work for me right now so i think that's what it is i hope i've answered your question yes yes, yes it was of an course it was an exciting yeah, question yeah. and I, <laughs> I i i do agree i do agree as we were also discussing about music like i love the mu the music world i mean every kind of music is okay for me i mean i am just loving that uh, environment so yeah, yeah. Yeah. So okay, I would like to ask you, uh, you know, the men uh, from Assam, where you had uh, uh, stalwart like uh, Bhupen Hazarika, uh, uh, how did uh, you know uh, his songs influenced you in uh, growing up years? I I will talk of one song. Mm -hmm. It I it might have a Bengali. I don't know if they have a Bengali transliteration for it. It was about. uh 
the name i'll just give you an example of one song and mm-hmm. the artist mm-hmm. can make it it can make out of anybody it definitely made me so it was called hoy khobote dhamalite hoy khob is childhood and dhamali is fun childhood okay. games hoy khobote dhamalite so that's an asmis to the asmis word so he talks of a time when he's met probably the first love of his life and some point they are they have jumped into a river and they are bathing so the root of the song is love sensuality and probably they were not in love then they were probably children you know they just jumped into the water and you know and uh, because nobody knows where the song came from i'm telling you what was in the song mm-hmm. so it talks about two people who were in the river uh, and uh, they were shy and slowly they grown up and he he is in love with this woman but she finds somebody very rich and she goes with him and he's oh. obviously speaking of marriage <laughs> and uh, then then he says in asimis that uh, monor goraki keri dhonor goraki dhorila monor goraki mon means you left the somebody you left the person that who was in your soul and you went after who had the riches the dhon monor goraki keri dhoror goraki so the song progresses like that and he says the one day i saw you with somebody with this man and you know i turned that away so it's a it's a it's a sensual song which moves on which moves on to uh, a sense of economics and what it did and undid him mm. it moves on to life and in the end this whole sensual song in the end he says i want to create a society jai thaki ekon samaj goribor mon ase jot khunot koi manuhor dam baki ase he says i want to create a society where the value of human of humans is more than the value of gold jai thaki ekon samaj goribor mon ase he said i i want to live and i want to create a society where the value of gold is more than the value of uh, where the value of the human is more than the value of gold gold so oh. so see the journey of the song and see and in the end lines he says that so these are songs when you i i'm fortunate to have some been stumbled onto the songs when i was very young so they frame you they real, you realize that sometimes songs can have very big meanings yes songs a love song can end somewhere else a love don't mean not be only a love song so i would say you know those have had profound influences on being and writing the songs that we do and creating the sort of music that we want to do so just to give an example of the sort of music i liked and how it worked for me and uh, you know uh, we were talking about uh, uh, bhupen hazari ka ji so uh, i would like to ask you beside the hindi and assami you know you uh, have uh, collaborated with the uh, uh, shruti hasan and composed uh, in assami uh, tamil fusion songs uh, the lyrics were uh, painted uh, by you know kamal hasan ji so how do you see that experience i mean how did you experience it and uh, do you wish to do more like this in uh, future as well actually shruti and i were very good friends so uh if, if these are these are called collaborations actually collaborations i i take a lot of time for collab i'm not a very collaborative person because you know the whole idea of collaborations in india is like have a cup of coffee and you know jam i don't know if it's a good or bad thing it takes a lot of time for me to you know sit down with somebody and say that no let's do a song together so shruti and i are very dear friends so we decided to work on an idea and that turned into a song we still haven't got around to recording the song we performed the song so i have done one to collaborative things with people i have really you know grown close to so if you ask me have i do i look forward or do i see myself i really don't know it it depends on the time place and definitely the person you know and the idea but is uh, i i cannot sit down with somebody and say have a cup of coffee and say okay let's do a song maybe i don't have that in me you know i am not that good <laughs> tell you tell you very frankly <laughs> you know I I hope I've answered that question. Your mic is off. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. Yes. Uh, Arpita, your microphone. Yeah, is yeah. Off. So I was just asking Arijit. I mean, uh, you you have something to ask? You said. 
Uh, no, I've been listening and it's so intriguing. I just uh, like don't know what uh, to express. But yeah, it's nice chatting. You carry on for some more time. Let me get the fish. <laughs> and I'm in the chat so much. Then, so I can imagine. Like you are just sitting there and enjoying. I can ask one question. Yeah, I'm, I'm in a free mood. Like uh, want to just yeah. listen to them, what they did. But before that, also now I would like to now that all that I uh, may be hearing from Joy and we haven't started that much with Rishi yet. But again, I as a, a, a other perspective from your end also, like you being a child artist and you also perform in different platforms. So what your thoughts then, Arpita? Now that we are talking to them, I am also interested to know about that. Okay, so uh, yeah, I mean I was. Uh, not a studious girl, <laughs> you know, being the youngest one, I wasn't uh, uh, very studious. So, yeah, I mean, uh, poetry uh, was something like when it, it just started. I mean, I was just, uh, I was actually, uh, you know, studying and my sister was behind uh, beside me and I was preparing for my exam and uh, suddenly I wrote a few lines and I showed her and she was like, to pad rahi hai kya kar rahi hai <laughs> but she was so impressed ki i mean you have written so good lines she was impressed and she said ki um, you should write and uh, then you know it, then it started like i i, I started, started. Uh, you know for my school magazines and slowly i started performing in uh, uh, kavi sammelans in uh, you know jaipur and uh, around rajasthan mp up uh, so even my dad used to love that. So, uh, you know, I, I got uh, awarded from Rajasthan Pathak Manch uh, thrice. So it was like a proud moment for my dad also. And that's what, you know, you are looking for. More than your happiness, your parents' happiness is like uh, too much for you. So, yeah, that was, so, so that's why I, you know, started uh, enjoying this journey a lot. And um, then, you know, yeah, you know, a lot uh, in 2017, my book got published because I had a gap of uh, around seven to eight years in between. Got busy with career and everything. And then suddenly, you know, it happened. Yeah, something is missing. I started writing again and, uh, you know, this book came. Uh, so now it is like as joy said it is the phase where i'm enjoying doing it I'm, I'm running my business and i'm enjoying this this is like people are jealous of this also <laughs> like a few of my friends they are like wow i mean this, this artistic mind and this you know whatever we do artistically this somewhere you know keeps you very calm and uh, it is kind of meditation so yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to like uh, my my whole purpose was to <clears throat> know what from a common people's perspective and those people be who are already celebrity. So I just wanted to know you shared a good piece of information. Uh, I'd like to go back to uh, Rishi. Rishi, uh, <clears throat> now that uh, you are a man of many hats, <laughs> from being a guitarist to various instruments and then being a singer and a music composer and a director. How is your journey so far since making a mark with the Bangla band, Porush Pathur, to Tollywood, then to Bollywood? What we know about this man, Rishi's journey. Can you tell us something about that? <laughs> yeah, so it, uh, the band thing started first, just like Joy, I was into the same kind of music, uh, a lot of Beatles and a lot of rock music and uh, Guns N' Roses had just come up those days. So it was a real, uh, very like uh, hot blood kind of approach to music in those like, like that aggressive uh, thing. I still do. And it, it all started from that, you know, when you are in college that you, you have that aggression and the rock music came at the right time and it just, you know, got directed in the right uh, area. And uh, I think we excelled all our friends, uh, like we started off in college. My first band was my college uh, buddies and uh, we started winning competitions. So music has always been like, uh, it has been a great start. Like the first competition we won, we won, kept winning competitions. Then Porush Patel happened, which was an original music and uh, 
those days uh very honestly we didn't know much about music also just the, some certain basics and we were already attempting new, our own songs and uh, there was a lot of struggle uh, to get into the market but then it really works and uh, life changed uh, you know what else can you ask from god <laughs> like if then you are in college just out of college you are touring you are you have like people uh, like a lot of fans for the band and a uh, lot of popularity and it's always fun it never felt like work or anything it was always like an experience like oh god i'm so lucky like every time i'm on stage and the crowd is jumping it's like an experience like i don't know uh, it can never be uh, enough that experience so uh, you know that kept uh, i just kept wanting that probably for a long time and uh, yes i uh, kind of uh, a lot of dreams came through the first band uh, that i grew up uh, uh, kind of the band that made me decide that i want to be there was a was a, a calcutta band called shiva those days when we went college uh, and they were phenomenal and there was like five six seven eight bands in india which were doing really well certain northeast bands calcutta shiva was the biggest one so shiva i saw shiva concert and uh, that kind of changed my life i just want to be on that stage one day and that's what started happening and uh, then it, life has been great as a as a touring band you know traveling your and best part is your bandmates are your best friends so it's more it's great it's like a cricket team i would imagine uh, a lot of fun and yeah so from there moving on to films was uh, something that was not like straight to films it was uh, a curiosity again that uh, yeah performing live is an experience but uh, creating music in the studio is another experience which i was completely unaware of at that time so i kind of uh, got into recording and uh, worked under music directors played guitar on uh, advertising jingles and background music and film songs and stuff to do with uh, worked under debo jyoti mishra one quite an eminent calcutta music director those days so uh, yeah that uh, that studio atmosphere also kind of uh, very was very appealing to me i i love the atmosphere and i just want to stay there all day even if i have a 10 minute part so it's like that so i figured that i want to be here and uh, then slowly slowly uh, you know opportunities came my way and i kind of accepted every challenge and tried to you know do well in that challenge so one challenge got me to be next up a challenge and that way i think from ads to movies to uh, commercial bengali movies which is like uh, just like joy for me uh, my background has never i have never been interested in bengali commercial films you know growing up days and the music especially in those films i i actually i used to detest that those days today i'm i am not so judgmental but to be honest yeah those days i i hated that music i didn't like that music at all i could never imagine myself being a part of that kind of a film but you know uh, life is always full of surprises and this is what is enjoyable and this kind of suddenly i'm finding myself in the middle of hardcore commercial films and i and it was so exciting that i could never imagine that i would be so excited to be a part of a commercial film bengali film and i remember the first day of release and when the posters are on the wall and i'm like it's so unbelievable <laughs> like my name is on the poster wow. and uh, tomorrow we have a release and all that from where to where you know like it's completely shocking for me also and then uh, yeah it was nice it was really nice then again there was a gap we were again performing live for a long time and did a lot of tv work uh, during that period and then again uh, uh, we, in fact we started when it was films we were like a team a couple of our band members we decided like let's form a team and uh, do some studio work and let's produce music and learn producing and learn how to record and learn the mixing art of mixing what happens in a studio how to get a good product so that's how it started it was all like initially we were three then it became two then it became all one single solo and now it's very different times are changing i think the uh, expression of art the meaning value of art is changing so it's i am also looking forward just like joy i think the best is yet to come for me 
Right, right. Now that best is here to come for you, yeah. you have uh, from taking from there. I would like to ask, like you have been, you have composed for several art films uh, and in jingles spanning over these two decades of your career. Now that I can, I was following you. I saw that you have been uh, doing some uh, work on the YouTube videos right. and releasing it every Friday. Yeah. So, what is uh, is it all about? Which has been uh, coming up every Friday. What are the work you are doing? Yeah. So basically, from as you heard from the experience, the band was something, movies are something else, ads are something else, everything is something else, and generally for something. Or for a common purpose or something. Even if I'm doing a solo career in music direction or whatever performer, it is uh, for something always. So now in this lockdown period and lately in life, you know uh, things are changing, perspectives are changing also. So this is something that I've started doing just for me, just for my own satisfaction, and without any uh, like brief or any any previous pre-planned idea or a concept to achieve something you know it is just like i want to express my uh, whatever little creativity i can express through music i've started doing my own video visuals uh, you know editing and all that because of technology everything is possible now sitting at home you can do uh, create an entire production audio visual so i'm focusing on uh, expanding my creat creativity you know uh, i like you said i play guitar sung compose all that now I'm expanding to more of visuals also along with the audio. So every I have uh, I have a channel which uh, it is me and my elder brother. He is a chef. So both of us uh, we brothers have opened this channel. It's called Six Strings and a Frying Pan. Six strings uh, like guitar has six strings, so six strings and a frying pan denotes a chef. So two of us we have started this. Uh, kind of. That's a catchy name, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So everything is very relaxed, open, cool in this uh, idea concept, and it's uh, we are calling it a universal platform. We are open for every kind of creative work, and uh, the 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 fun part is uh, as of now we have been collaborating with uh, you know normal uh, common people who have never really attempted to go out there and express their art, but you know art is inside a lot of people. You know, a lot of people, but uh, a lot of people have not had the probably courage or whatever, some kind of lack of confidence to go out there and do it. But the art remains in the heart. So now I'm kind of we are projecting on taking that art out of their hearts. And uh, with all my experience and expertise, I'm trying to uh, present them in a in the most professional way. So every Friday we are releasing something or the other. And it, it is covering a lot of things from poems to music to everything. And recently what I did was I did a jam track with my first band guys. So, you know, it's just connecting again, wow. going back to those days. And so are, so much that. Yeah, and so some of them are in London. I think I'm opening for you. Your poems can get uh, now noticed by Richie. Yeah, I'm, I'm learning girls now. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, please. Yes. You, please. Come to our channel. There is an email ID. You write to us. We would love to collaborate and wow. present you in the best possible way. <laughs> That's wonderful. Arpita, carry on. Joy. With yeah. Joy. So you know, um, we were talking. Uh, uh, Rishi also said uh, uh, he used to travel a lot uh, for uh, you know with the band, and uh, we had so much fun while uh, working. You know, in any industry. So Rishi, now this is a common question nowadays i uh, uh, you know joy i would ask uh, like to ask you this how do you think the this you know lockdown period has uh, impacted the industry and what in your opinion uh, the artists would consider during uh, doing during this uh, phase of pandemic well uh, i think uh, for now the industry has slowed down We'll yeah. find a way out, as will everything. Everything will evolve, find a way out. So uh, I, I'm not too worried. I think the artist is getting a lot of time to introspect, study, go about things that he had not had time for. This is, this is I think, these are times to be really humble and find out what all we don't know. 
you know, regardless of whatever the world is telling us, and you know that this is great and that is so amazing. We have time to reflect. We are not traveling anywhere. We are not in a rush. We can actually find out how good we are or we are not. And uh, even, I think even, that even journey, uh, artists had uh, you know plans uh, for traveling. Like you also had uh, plans uh, to come yeah, to Europe. Yeah, lot of lot of lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of plans. But Everything. you know. But the point is, with the way I'm engaging myself with doing what I want to do, I've had no time. Absolutely no time. You know, True. I don't even know how these three, four months went. I don't even know if it's three or four months. I'm a little lost any which way, but I don't know whether it's three, four months. I, I, I get up early as if it's a normal thing. I get about, I study, I try to compose some music. I'm, I'm related to a few other things also. So uh, I have had no time to sit or think back that the world is closed. I do think that sometimes the world is closed because hence I'm getting so much time to do other things and invest time in things I like. But uh, it's a great time for to, to reflect, to understand, to get close to people. I think what the artist, you, you like music because music gives you a great sense of high happiness and it brings people together. And that is the reason why we start liking music in the first place and we want to be close to music. But then later on, when we turn artists, we forget the reason why we turn into music for the first reason, you know. Yeah. And then we just go on to making songs and making songs. We lose. We lose that sense of love and the sense of, uh, you know, affection and what got us started. So this is again time to invest back into those things that got us attracted to the music in the first place. Why that love affair happened. So I think it is, it's a refresh button mm -hmm. on this whole relationship between the artist and the art. And uh, I think this is a time to grow and, you know, to flower that plant again. You know. Exactly, and, exactly. Uh, and uh, water, water the tree or water the plant again. I, you know, yeah. there, there, there's so much to be done. There's so much to be done. Into, and I think uh, for an artist also to understand what art can do in, uh, in the last 14, 15 years, we've just been working. We took out stuff. I, I don't do so much work and you know, I like to do what I like to do. So I, it's not that I did so much work, but uh, time was always a premium. I realized what you really don't have is time. You can have, you can have everything. You can buy everything in the world. You cannot buy time. So now True. that you have time, you are reassessing, like you created songs and you created songs you like, you created songs people like, but what is the music going to do? Beyond the stage, what? What is there beyond iTunes and Spotify? What can you do with your music? Is the time when this time has taught probably some of us again. You know? So I, I choose to be learning in times like this. I agree. I agree. And that was uh, that was the uh, uh, answer I was looking for. Actually, even I think that way. You know, people are getting so. Uh, Frustrated during lockdown. But it's the time of creativity, as yeah, Joy mentioned. I yeah, believe that this you know, is the best time to, yeah, the best time to reinvent yourself. I yes. would say. Of course. And also, also, also about any kind of relation, relationships with the people you love, your family. I think mankind, but it's not only art; it's mankind by itself. Uh, is these are this. Uh, I think we'll never get this time back to learn and reassess ourselves again. Yes, absolutely. Much as we hate the pandemic and the closure, this these times, I hope these times don't come back to us like in the in this way. This way. You know, yeah. at, at, yeah. at, 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 at this cost. Yeah. Uh, but this it is time to reassess what we were going for in life. You know, what was important and what was not important, what to take forward and what not to take forward. You know. Uh, education, ambition. How much? How much of that do you really need? How much? It's like you know, you're dressed for all all kinds of weather. You're dressed for winter, but it's summer actually. You you need a t-shirt and a pair of shorts to go out. But you know, like you are like packed to the hilt. You know, you are like wearing five hats and you know seven layers of jackets. You don't need so much in life. You just need to go on. You know. Yeah. You know that's you shed true. what you don't uh, shed what you don't need, and take what you just need, man. You know, if this is teaching us people, 
relationships, art, work. You know, I, I think for for us, I think it's been a wondrous experience. Day before yeah. yesterday, the skies in Bombay were purple. I know. <laughs> we, we never saw purple skies here. Yeah. So we've survived to see this. So, and great beauty has come at a great cost. But uh, this is what has been the learning. What yes. it took for us to, you know, take everything away and see. And then I look at nature now and realize, you know, it's like when you paint a house, you're thinking so much of how to match color patterns, how to bring symmetry. But nature is perfect. There's no color which is too strong. There's, there's no color which is too off. Yes. Everything is just perfect. You look at the skies, it's perfect. You look at the greenery, it's perfect. There is no strong color. There is no off color, nothing. That's true, very true. Very true. Three months of shutdown and we are seeing purple sky. Six months, in six months time, if this is shutdown, the world will look like a disco. I think <laughs> Even I was like, uh, seeing some of the pictures where from, uh, I think from Punjab, you can see the mountain ranges. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, there's so much of uh, greeneries all around. You see the leaf the falling. Was, uh, the, uh, with the less population, they could uh, see the Himalayas. Uh, yeah, from their yeah. 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 I saw the picture. <laughs> so, uh, Joy, uh, the art and the artist in this process, uh, uh, in the person, should not be lost that we know. And uh, you also told. Even during this pandemic, what would be your message to the upcoming artist? Like, you got my question? Yeah, I do. I did. I, you know, I, I don't have a message. Message, you know, I think we can share experiences. You know, we cannot mm -hmm. have a message. But uh, the point is, I think uh, for for an artist, I think uh, we we build on the cultural heritage. As an, an artist builds on the culture. He's a, he's a cultural ambassador and he builds on the cultural heritage that he has or that he's been part of. Now, for, for somebody like me and even like Rishi, I think a whole Bhupen Hazarika and a John Lennon is part of our cultural heritage. We build on that. But uh, in times like this and in the lives that we lead, it's also important to understand what is cultural heritage is within us, but what is without natural heritage, people, ecosystems, society. I think the message for the artist is that to look, not only look within, we just get too lost with within. It's also important to look without and understand that we are all part of something. You know, it's, it's, it's like protons, neutrons, everything makes a molecule. So we are also part of structures where everything has, is as important. If you if you if you if you make the greatest songs, if you make the most beautiful songs in a studio and trash the worst public outside in the street, then that makes no artist of you. It's, it's like you've never learned anything. So much as I don't like this to be a rant on activism, I'm just saying the artist should be aware of what's around them in terms of people, in terms of the ecosystem. Uh, if art cannot teach. Awareness, nothing else can teach awareness. Art, you know, art teaches us to be aware of people, of plants, of humanity, of life. It teaches us empathy. I don't think the profession, uh, you know, uh, but just to make this point a little stronger, cost accounting will not teach you empathy. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know? <laughs> An engineering degree cannot teach you empathy. Art teaches you empathy. You know, that I, I I went to a commerce college, so at least I'll have the qualification of saying so. The balancing the left and right hand side of a balance sheet, it might teach you to put money in a CSR account, but that is not empathy. Yeah, that is I, that is I, logic I, and that I, is decision. So art I, teaches you empathy, but if you have learned empathy and you are not practicing it, then what's the point? You know. So I think the message for all from from all of us to people, I think, to so just look around and see if they can create a better world. Exactly. Heal the world, better world. That's what we are talking about. And uh, before I... You know, Aniti, back, uh, yes. I would, uh, you know, just, just because uh, Joy was uh, talking uh, about this. So, uh, you know, I was just thinking, you know, nowadays, because uh, we are doing so many things, 
uh, sitting at home we are cooking we are you know managing our business we are doing the, what we love we in good time although but also it's very you know hectic it become very hectic because we are having so many things so in general you know i would like to ask you also how do you balance you know being a research technical guy you know and then doing uh, these kind of stuff like you know uh, being the toi uh, nri brand ambassador for uh, times of india and then doing these kind of shows and managing your job so how do you manage it the balance well arpita this is and you are uh, a good cook too <laughs> yeah it, pandemic ka uh, uh, like uh, taught me many <laughs> many things from cooking to like hosting the celebrities and many other coming up with many other uh, topics of interest uh, yes being a research it guy that's a profession which uh, keeps my appetite full and uh, from there to a journey like uh, being a brand ambassador with times of india that's my passion so i will talk about that later on sometime <laughs> not right now we are discussing <laughs> the art celebrity so uh, it's a journey it's a, it's as a, a, we are listening from joy and rishi like it's a journey we grew up with uh, like each day on different uh, la- learning from different people and uh, how they balance learning that that has been my footer because i have been following many people and getting the best out of them like what they do how they are preparing themselves so during this lockdown period i have seen many posts in my feed uh, news feed keep coming like the cooking thing so <laughs> i was never a cook until 2017 uh-huh. i never eat a cup of coffee and you know now i am like cooking everything, everything. so that learning okay so the interest in me has uh, helped me to i grow. used to hate kitchen <laughs> uh, now i now i find my kitchen work is as a stress buster after working from home all day and when i find like now that i have to shift my move from a research technical guy to a passion of uh, like uh, writing something writing my uh, like writing about someone uh, writing about uh, like a topic of interest that will reach out to several people worldwide so that's the time i think about it that's the cooking place which is my cozy corner of my house yeah i would not elaborate much sometime else but now that we will move on uh, with rishi and before that joy i would like to come uh, come up to you with the ecosystem work which you have been doing a lot about the rent forest so let me ask few questions to rishi and then i'll come back to you sure. uh sure. rishi now that with porosh pathor uh, what we uh, have been like you have uh, done a lot of uh, like uh, work with porosh pathor going back to 90s the band which become a household name and rose to popularity charts with songs like bhalobasha mane artist gallery and uh, many more it was uh, like there were many popular form of music wave that started in bengal a uh, phenomenon has many recall porosh patur has uh, several hits to its credit reaching the top is tough and then maintaining is, is even tougher porosh patur the popular uh, band of the 90s perhaps the most famous infamous band of the 90s then oh shit hold on please uh the, then the fire caught up uh why was that because the you came out from the porosh pathor you and samit i, I think the lead uh, vocalist you came out why did this happen <laughs> well uh as joy was saying like at some point we forget where we started from i think the band was the, coming to that point where the band uh, some of the guys in the band were forgetting where we are coming from and what was the purpose and what is the entire thing all about uh, and so there was i think i would call it disciplinary disciplinary issues 
you know, when you are running a uh, organization which is like our band had a manager and we were pro professionally uh, touring and everything was professionally done. So when you are running a professional team, uh, there has to be a kind of discipline with all the madness and craziness. Uh, you know, you understand, but still there is a you know somewhere there is a thin line which all, all artists should all know. And so it was get that zone where suddenly I was feeling somewhere deep down that I don't want to represent this uh, energy. You know that this combined energy because now the all minds are not together. It's the whole, uh, you know, understanding of the thing is not together anymore. It's getting scattered. So I thought it's good to leave when things are there instead of, you know, uh, just sliding down with it. Uh, that's how I felt. So uh, I decided to just move on and see what's next for me. And I that has happened in my life a lot of times. I reach a place and then it just falls back to zero. And again, something else happens. It's a different route. Uh, which is nice. So, but uh, I don't have much. Uh, I mean, I have no hard feelings. It's only about, I have only good memories. And I think leaving the band was the best uh, decision I could make at that point of time. Uh, uh, just on that, I would like to continue with yeah. this question. Like young boys and girls those days in Bengal, uh, like uh, uh, was following you and the open air concerts and everything was in a popular way and you people were coming up in a big way but uh, the air was filled with lots of Porosh Pathur music and uh, then do you and Samir uh, would like to get back again and would we can we see that you guys team up again uh, and give many more uh, music uh, or contribute uh, many more new music in the near future? Do you plan that? Uh, you, do you have in mind anything about it? No, nothing in mind about it. Like uh, for me again, I don't want to now partner with somebody like team up and do anything. Uh, right now, I don't, I'm not in the headspace. But I think what 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 happens and then it ends and then you move on. You should not again go back to the same story and continue that. Story, I like new stories, new directions, new. What is gone is gone. It's past. It's like past life. That's true. That you have to move on. You just can't mm. keep what was uh, went wrong. Yeah, I want sure. newer things. I want newer things. Yes. Newer experiences. Yes, because experience taught you a lot many things, and I'm sure in the near Everything. future we will uh, <laughs> have many more musicians team up with you and then go forward. Arpita, over to you. So uh, I would like to ask Joy now, uh, you know, about uh, the work you are doing. So, you know, Assam is a land of rich culture and uh, cultural and natural resources, uh, the best known for, uh, uh, you know, uh, tea gardens, oil refine refineries, international uh, known for, uh, you know, uh, Kaziranga forest. One honor, someone's uh, microphone is disturbing me, I guess. Arijit Ross. So, yeah, and, uh, uh, you know, magnificence of uh, rainforest and uh, beautiful waterfalls. So you have recently raised issues uh, about public concerns about illegal mining that has, uh, you know, occurred lately in Assam. Uh, so we have seen you at uh, the rain uh, uh, forefront apply, um, amplifying a public concern over illegal mining reported from uh, the, you know, Patkai, India's largest uh, uh, low uh, lowland rainforest and also the ongoing uh, you know bagja gas pipeline blow out uh, so that has resulted in loss losses of uh, several houses trees lives of uh, you know human and animal uh, people are taking shelter in relief camps since the fire broke out uh, since the end of may uh, what so what influenced or pulled you for uh, this particular issue being uh, an artist hi so i think uh, all of us have gone and grown complacent assam is anyway 
They're very easygoing people. You know, there's there's great weather, great vegetation. There, you know, there's abundance. So people, I think we've got very laid back, and it's it's not we've grown laid back. We we've been this way. So I I was taken to the rainforest about eight years ago, and I was fascinated. Like we have rainforests now. Rainforest is something where nature changes inside. You know, where there's mutations. They are the last known mysteries of mankind. There are different things that can happen inside a rainforest. There are rainforests in India, in, in Assam, I think somewhere in Lakshwadweep or uh, Andamans, I'm not sure. And then in Indonesia, and then you have in the Amazon. These are, I think, the four or five places where there are yeah. rainforests. So, and rainforests are heavily mysterious places. So I was, I was amazed that, you know, I was taken to the rainforest and then I knew that we had rainforests. I personally have grown up in Assam. I, I came to know of rainforest now, like eight years ago. I thought it was a crying shame. And now, after eight years, I hear that part of the rainforest, you know, they are being cleared. So my thing was not a my my thing was not an activist movement against the people who were doing this. My thing was and I'm done with the whole set thing of blaming somebody at the center, blaming the government. My thing is that if we are asleep, how long can we keep on blaming others? That's a wrong True. attitude. Yes. We don't know what we have. If we don't know what we have, we don't even know what we are going to lose. Nobody was giving a damn about what was happening. There was no talk of being Pattai anywhere. There were environmentalists who were working on it, but I think it's the job of an artist to amplify. That's a different job, you know, that's a different kind of awareness. Some, we, some of us have the, you know, the bandwidth to do that. And people, there are a lot of people who know us and hence it's, it's an easier job, I would say. Of course, yeah. So for us, and then I realized, you know, for a forest to happen or for example, I'll just give you the nature of a tree. For a tree to grow and for a tree to happen, you first you need is like somebody who has got the nature of the tree and the seed, like a botanist or a zoologist or whoever, environmentalist to, to understand that this is the way a tree is going to grow. To tell the world that the tree exists, you need musicians and artists like Rishi and me. The botanist is not going to write a song or write a poem about the tree. It is the musicians and artists who are going to tell the world that the tree exists, that the flowers are going to bloom. To ensure that the tree stays in space and you know nobody's encroaching and nobody's going to cut away, you need the government and you need government and agencies for the tree to grow and not for people to cut it away. When the three of, when the environmentalist fails, when the government fails and when the artist fails, then the lawyers come in. Then they move court and they make it a law and say, don't cut the tree. I realize this now. I, 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 I realize that nobody knew about Dehing Patka because the artists were not doing about, you know, there's more to this, but I said, I, I thought the artists aren't doing what they're supposed to do. They are not amplifying. And suddenly waking up in the morning and singing a song is not work enough. There has to be conversation. You just cannot get up in the morning and say, I love the Amazon rainforest. No, that is, this has to be sustained conversation. So what I did, I brought up the conversations. I opened up my Facebook. During times of lockdown, people were just singing songs. I said, I'm done with songs. That is my job. I'll do that. I, I live to sing songs, but I'll open up conversations on nature and Dehing Patka. That's what I did. And do I know enough about Dehing Patka? I don't. So I, I brought in the people who knew. I brought in the environmentalists who knew. Okay. I, brought in, brought in the, I brought in the lawyers who were responsible in filing the PIL. Is what is happening in Dehing Patka. I brought in students who cared. So I got the whole order sorted. There were different groups of people. I brought them together. And nobody would have listened to them because they don't have that kind of an audience. How is a student supposed to have an audience? But I exposed True. him to my audience. I brought him on to my Facebook. I brought him on to my social media. And suddenly, a whole movement built up in two months. I don't think Assam had so much spoken about those rainforests in the last 15, 18 years as it has in the last two months and in the last two weeks. Well. My job, our job as an artist is awareness. We, we speak about the forest. We speak about the flowers. Our job is not policing. 
people are now sending me of you know the trees are being cut you know joy bolo why don't you amplify it i said that is your job and the police's job we cannot do a policing job but we can speak about the environment we can speak about the rivers we can speak about the people so that people who are watching they know what to take care of what to be careful of yeah that is our job and that is the job i'm doing only that that's that's good you know and the ecosystem worldwide is going through a major downfall uh, so a complete haywire uh, the trees being cut uh, the habitat and the wild, wild uh, wildlife are much at risk globally mm. so what an artist in you you know thinking from the perspective and uh, uh, to do contain or spread the message to the world i think it has to be part of our conversations it has to be part of our music it has to be part of the conversation around so as music, a, when you, you know, sing using social media and bringing all them all together talking about yeah, it for example for thinking. example for example even even uh, since i'm doing it and i'm done it for the last two months i've had i have brought in lawyers i've brought in everything now today we are speaking about it now you now that is also something i do and that's why you're including this as a part of this conversation you know <laughs> now you're watching this arjit's uh, you know their people are watching this your friends are watching this rishi's friends are watching suddenly this conversation has incrementally gotten bigger bit by bit so uh, this is what it does since i'm doing this it's being amplified and that is what it is i don't have to try too hard i just have to work at what i have to work and when i speak about things it gets amplified that's it there's no really rocket science to this but i think we need to do this all the time when i do a concert tomorrow i'll be speaking about the ecosystem why should i not these are my backyards how can i just watch my backyard being just gone how can i watch my land being just you know wasted so <clears throat> i'll bring it up at every concert i'll bring it up at every opportunity in terms of awareness in terms of awareness i i do i am not an activist activist but there is activism in our music and that's a sense of awareness i think the set we are trying to, if i'm trying to fight something is the lack of awareness i'm not trying to fight a company or the police or a government i'm trying to fight ignorance that's that's a unique way of doing that and uh, no other person other than uh, joy borwa from assam taking this up it's definitely uniting people from every other sectors of uh, life and i think that uh, is reaching out that's how we also reached out to you like uh, following you getting to know about your ecosystem and the rainforest you are working on so that's uh, uh, that's a great piece of information uh, i will just like to ask rishi now a question uh, like you are dealing with name fame success in the tollywood industry uh, until 2016 17 then you uh, suddenly decided to shift your base to mumbai why was that yeah i don't uh, yeah little before that yeah. so why was that i thought if not now then when <laughs> and uh, i thought this time i'll just uh, you see in india you can go up to a certain level in re- doing regional work and i a kind of uh, whatever opportunities are there for musicians like performances and uh, movies and ads and all. so you do it in your own city and i i am not a guy who is like completely stuck in one place or city or you know i would like to explore different places and uh, in the last 5 years i have lived uh, mostly in bombay but then again uh, couple of years in delhi also uh i decided to move on because i want to learn more i i was more curious and uh, due to bengali films uh, i used to come to bombay very often and do all my work here and uh, working with uh, a lot of atmis musicians technicians here i have done recordings with a lot of good musicians over here for the bengali films and which uh, kind of uh, really made me fall in love with this place and the way things work here and the kind of uh, 
you know overall the atmosphere the openness in the uh, thought process of the air there is some kind of like i found little more breathing space uh, as an artist uh, because i was completely new here nobody knows me here and uh, i didn't even know how to go from one place to the other i had no idea it was completely in a strange land with strange people and uh, i think that experience has taught me more and uh, today when i my all these experiences will come out in whatever i am doing and will do in the future so i think this uh, getting comfortable in one zone and you know you think that okay now i've cracked it and this is it i'll just continue this and other focus on uh, just living a good life partying with friends and sleeping and eating well is not me uh I'm, i have to make my life little hard sometimes for me so that's me to arpita uh, you have any questions for rishi uh yeah i mean uh, i was just uh, you know thinking that you know uh, when we found rishi uh, as a singer and composer so how all uh, that happened i am i am not a learned musician okay i have never learned anything i have not learned how to sing i have not learned how to play i have not learned how to compose nothing so it's all out of a sensibility that i kind of trusted from childhood and initially it was uh, pausing tapes and picking up guitar solos it started from that era and uh, now it's so easy everything is available but i'm lucky i am from that era where you know i have to really work hard you know you really focus on something you really get into it so that has a different value which you carry all your life and uh, you can't really measure it so everything has happened that way thing i have never considered myself a singer i still don't i just sing a few songs maybe which i am comfortable that's all i don't consider myself a singer you know uh and singing also happened like uh, see when the uh, we had a band called hip pocket in kolkata uh, a rock band classic rock band we used to do a lot of classic rock covers a lot of things floyds and beatles and dire straits and that band uh, was kind of popular in kolkata and we there was this pub called shampley cells so that was this new culture being formed on in park street you know where live music used to happen in kolkata so live music kind of came back uh and this band became kind of very popular with that uh, whole thing coming back so we had great fun those days playing at a pub twice a week uh so there what happened was uh, the the guy who uh, no the, i think there was a theme, the yeah the vocalist the female vocalist she had to leave and she she had like a uh, like some 40 songs in her belt you know like for the band so suddenly the band lost 40 songs So immediately we had to distribute as much as you know as you can within the band members. Oh. So like about seven eight songs came to me, and that's how I started singing like on a regular basis. So it picked up. I think I that kind of performing, so singing, singing, and singing got me helped me improve also, and I started enjoying singing, and especially in my band. Uh, Uh, we had two guitar players myself and uh, another great guitar player called sumit ramachandran so he like one of the like one of the best ever guitar players in india so he's amazing he's like so you know having a guitar player like of that stature uh, next to you in the band uh, i dis- i realized also the band shaped up that way that i realized that i need to focus more on my voice and singing because the guitar is very we are very strong as it is so that's how i could focus more on the singing because i could i could you know have a backing uh, guitar player like sumit ramachandran you know giving magic to enhance my singing so yeah i was lucky i so these things trained me uh, playing with a lot of senior and good musicians of my city has taught me a lot of things i have learned a lot from those all these people yeah uh, so, so like that so everything is happening hmm. composing i think it's a very yeah yeah <laughs> also it's a very natural thing you either have it or you don't have it so uh, you know it's like feeling you either exactly. feel something or you don't feel something so composition yes. happens from that zone uh, i am still blessed to sometimes uh, connect to those feelings 
and something happens out of nowhere nothing out of nothing thank you rishi thank you we have uh, learned so much from you heard about your stories your journeys your challenges and i'm sure the uh, the uh, viewers who are with us today would be getting the many important messages and uh, they because they follow uh, the uh, the celebrities quite closely so whatever you are saying it will be closely uh, being monitored or followed by them now going back to <laughs> joy again uh, you have now that we were talking about the ecosystem and the rainforest <clears throat> you have been lately uh, been vocal and raising concerns about this public issues uh, also <clears throat> what according to you is the sustainable progress towards keeping the nature alive preserving a healthy ecosystem and are you working on anything uh, to spread the message to the world through your work but firstly with uh, awareness that is the biggest evil plaguing us in many senses not only in terms of the ecosystem i i think people have to be very aware education really needs to go up in terms of what we have and what we are going to lose uh have i done anything with the music uh, my my work in terms of music always involved culture uh, not uh, not the natural heritage of it though I, i was tied up to things but i think i will take it up in a more proactive way right now in terms of my music also yeah that will be part of my music and also everything around my music now for a while i think great great uh, arpita you want to uh, elaborate something on that uh, no i mean uh, i I actually am very uh, much fascinated about music. I guess. Uh, so I would uh, like to ask uh, Jai now. Assam is uh, known for uh, gold bihu, bohag bihu, and uh, the beautiful, you know, migratory birds sing in, uh, eternally. Uh, even Arijit, uh, you also like we were talking about this uh, the other day, right? So you are also fascinated with these, uh, so the sounds of you know Yetki bird, uh, which must have influenced you know you joy. So you're in your growing up years to pen down various compositions. So do you still feel uh, that the magic of our nature is lost, or you know it's gone now, and uh, the human don't feel it anymore? we we we've, we've lost a lot of beautiful things i don't know if it's gone uh we don't know if it's gone we've lost a lot of it we've lost a lot of very beautiful things there are there are, the siberian forests are burning siberia, siberia is burning so we are in i don't think we are in great times and before the world wakes up people think they are destroying the world you know that's the thing people think they can destroy the world the world will destroy us and it will rebuild itself again you know we cannot we we are nowhere in the scene people think we are powerful we'll dig coal and we'll do this and we will give a damn about the ecosystem we are not even a blip on the on the radar this will go away sooner and uh, i don't know i i i had kind of foreseen this sort of a medical thing in about 10 years time i had a i had a conversation with a scientist this january a very big scientist where i was reading a couple okay. of articles so uh -huh. i i i in in like 10 years time i thought in the beginning of this year that we will not have some life saving essential drugs like something like malaria could go crazy what i thought would happen in 10 years with all the awareness i think i can master it came in a in one year and minus 9 months that is how close we are and uh, this is going to be very tough if we don't wake up i don't think we have time actually i i i am an optimist by nature uh, in terms of but i'm no, not no, optimistic of, like... of but i'm not optimistic of the way we are treating nature i think we are going to get it very hard and very soon 
very hard and very yeah, soon. We'll I, I think, getting uh, it hard. Uh, we will get it very hard, and we'll we'll not even realize. People think they you you own the planet. You, the planet owns you. You know, we are being we are being foolish. We are being stupid. You start a conversation around why you're cutting rainforests, and you know, big big corporate people are telling you should we go back to the Stone Age? Like, are you stupid? <laughs> I'm I'm telling you, just cut a few less trees. <laughs> I know we've not probably found the alternative fuels here. We are, we know we've not found the fuels or Tika will get there. You tell people that don't cut, you know, leave the rainforest. And they're telling me that should we go back to the stone age? If this is, if this is the wisdom of somebody who is 60 and who has been on the board of companies, that wisdom is worth shit. You know, that is a, that is sad. That's sad. That, I agree with you. It's so sad. That is sad. If if I'm yeah. telling people that, you know, that if I'm telling somebody, if I'm asking somebody, I'm, I'm telling is not the way. If I'm having a conversation that let's not dig near eco-sensitive zones, eco-sensitive zones. And yes. they are digging like probably 500 meters off. And somebody telling me like, should we go back to the Stone Age? Now, I don't know whether I should talk. Exactly. Whether I should talk. I don't know whether I should talk to you or fire a bullet between your eyes. You know, sometimes it's that bad. That's bizarre. Like, thought because, going back to the story. Yeah, yeah, no, no. And, and these are these are experienced, educated people, and they have screwed the planet. That's have, what it they is. have screwed the planet. That's what it is happening no. right away, right now. And these are uh, these are people. These are people with these are people with engineering degrees. These are people with more education than me. What is education if it's not giving you some bloody wisdom? They have gone through the great technology institutes of a country, probably gone on to sponsored MBAs, worked with big companies in the country, and they are telling me, should we go back to the Stone Age? I am in the Stone Age, man. That's why we put you guys like you in the boards of petroleum companies. You run those companies and you're telling people that should we go back to the Stone Age? If somebody is asking you, that are you digging close to an eco-sensitive zone? This is... This is what education has made humankind. You know, they think they own the planet. The planet owns so them. We are gone. You know, we are will be gone in a second. They don't even realize this. You know. Yes. You can't yeah. even you can't even have a conversation. You know, you can't even write to somebody saying what is this? I my my article was on the wire. They said you know the wire is something like this. Okay. Two of the best lawyers came with me. Who the guys were fighting the case. These guys are saying you don't know. Then the, when the lawyers went at them, they kept quiet. Suddenly, this gentleman recessed into the shadows. You hmm. know, like, like you know, Batman would do it with the Dark Knight. You know, he went into the shadows, like Bane said, "We are born of the shadows." Hmm. Now, this gentleman who's been on the board, he just went quiet. I said, hmm. you know, I am not driving a conversation around the ecosystem. I have got educated people who are doing it for me. I'm raising awareness. I don't know a tree. I don't know at what level you find coal. But I'll tell yes. you, I'll get the people who know. Yes. But if this, if this is the polarity of conversations we hear, I think we are an evolvingly stupid, stupid race or we are evolving stupidly, you know. This is regression. Right. Soon will okay. soon mankind will go back to ape. You know, I and I, I don't mean to insult apes. We will regress backwards. We won't go forwards. No, we will go back to apes. We'll go back to apes, and we will we'll go back to the Neanderthal man. Life That's what the pandemic uh, has been doing, and uh, most people are uh, <laughs> getting back to earlier days. Yeah. And uh, finally, yeah. that uh, it's it's a nice conversation going on. I'm sure Arpita, you would also agree, and. Uh, we have uh, this I'm conversation. I'm in this session, you know. I and don't want to uh, end up. <laughs> these conversations will keep going. Everything has to have a good end. So, uh, Joy and Rishi, I'll have uh, one one question for you. Uh, Joy, for you, finally, any song or album that you are planning in working upon during this pandemic, which focused on, I probably asked you, which focused on preservation of environment. And other than that, what are your upcoming projects and music that the people are eagerly waiting from our very own talented Jai Borua, uh, which will connect people, religion, region, all across the globe? I'll keep it short. I'm, I'm working on my own music. I have I create very less music, so I'm working on my own music. I've been accused of being lazy. 
I'm I'm working with a few other musicians who always wanted to work. I thought you know let me start with some musicians whom I respect, and uh, that I'm doing, getting other people to kind of introspect and write. I'm working on movies, and I'm also working on a future musical which we want to set up in Broadway. So hence I work at Abbey Road Studios, London. So these are the three four things I am I am working on in terms of music. That's wonderful, and uh, the, the we all. I uh, wish you a very good luck uh, and we will eagerly wait to uh, have uh, this uh, music uh, uh, come online i i'm sure it will be sooner and uh, rishi the same question goes to you uh mm -hmm. do you need me to repeat the question or you are fine with that what like what hear. is coming up for me yes yes yeah Yeah. So uh, yeah, I've just uh, launched my own YouTube channel. Yeah. yeah. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes. Hello. Yes. Yes. I can hear. So my channel is very new. It's just been two three months, and uh, I'm totally working for myself, and also uh, working on an album of uh, instrumental album which I'd never planned to or in all these years. I'm now getting there. i am very excited about that a uh, couple of ideas have shaped up and uh, otherwise every friday i am trying to do some something different and uh, different people people uh, collaborations and you know like uh, it's like out of the blue ideas i just released a jam track which was never a concept like for me in my head to release then there are songs then there are heartfelt covers then there are original music then there's a uh, lot of poems and music put together little we are we have just launched something called uh, great letters which is uh, the, the great letters from great people uh, you know which 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 holds so much value which which means so much i mean the truth is the same and so these these real heroes had written some great letters uh, which are of so much value in today's time when we have the time to introspect so we are also releasing letters in a you know in a, a packaged in an entertaining fashion with good visuals with good music uh and uh, like well narrated so yeah doing all kinds of new new stuff uh you can all come and uh, check it up check out my channel and uh, see what i'm doing that's uh, great yeah this that's great so now uh, you know this show unfortunately is coming to an end but uh, we are talking you know so much about music and uh, what's going on around us and uh, music ki baat ho aur gana nahi ho it's like <laughs> you know it shouldn't be happen and since joy is with us and rishi is with us so joy you know my favorite movies you know my favorite songs <laughs> so i would like to request you you know to sing Um, a song for me, uh, for our. Uh, is it uh, uh, if I would ask, like, can you quickly make a medley? So it's it it will be. No, actually, uh, I I I I am getting into another meeting after this, so I'll quickly sing a song and I'll leave. I, okay. I, 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 yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. I, I'll just get, sing one two lines. You know, I'm rushing into another thing. Am I audible? Yes, very much. Okay, this 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 was the only love song that has come out from our from from me actually. So, in terms of an Asmi song. मनरे कथारे का 
That's it, right? Thank, Thank you, you so much. Joy, joy, one, one Bollywood song. Joy, please. Sorry? <laughs> one Bollywood song. Bollywood, wow. Okay, since <laughs> since you mentioned uh, Imtiaz, I'll do a little of the Leila Majnu song for you. Wow. That's okay. great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there is there is actually uh, the song comes twice in the movie once the beginning of romance and once the end of romance so i i sing the beginning and uh, and the end like the, the climax atif comes in and sing so what i sing is basically a hybrid of both the songs i don't know which is which now uh, though both are very different songs actually so that's fine is the guitar audible Perfect. Rishi, am, Rishi, am I doing fine? He's the musician. He'll tell me. If I'm not doing fine, you tell me. I'll, I'll just shut up and go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ऐसे भटकता हूँ दिन रात दिखता हूँ मैं तेरी राहों में मेरे गुनाहों में मेरे सवाबों में शामिल तू ठंडी सी बचपन के कुर्ते में से मिल तू रंग छुपा के मैं बातों में ले रहा हूँ माँ मुझे मान से रब से वो ले रहा कब से मैं तेरा हूँ कब से तू मेरी ले रहा तेरी तलब थी है तेरी तलब है तू ही तो सब थी है तू ही तो सब है कब से मैं तेरा हूँ कब से तू मेरी ले रहा ओ मेरी ले रहा ले रहा कब तू है पहला कब से मैं तेरा हूँ कब से तू मेरी ले रहा ओ मेरी थैंक यू सो मच जॉय फॉर हैविंग एक्सेप्टेड आवर रिक्वेस्ट एंड No, yeah, I know but, it's but, too uh, long because would, I, not, yeah, we will come no, back again. Yeah, it sure. was. Yeah. Yeah. We enjoyed sure. a lot, and yeah, uh, and I would, I would love to have Joy you again on a platform. You know, this platform. Thank you. So. Thank you. Oh, the yes. pleasure is mine too. Yeah. And uh, thank, thank you for you know. No, it was a good thing. At least we got to talk. It's important. You know, sometimes musicians are just called to sing, so that gets very repetitive and very boring. but thank you you know for such a beautiful conversation rishi rishi thank you for you know listening <laughs> he is a great musician himself but rishi i'm sorry i'm having to rush today but i'll i'll make up for you i i'll we'll share sure. contacts and we'll get in touch man yes but, sir you know, I, i would love Absolutely. to i'll love to talk we'll to connect you. we'll connect and thank you same here same here and you love thank you guys thank you for joining also we we'll love to have you all together and meet you and do something uh once sure. the pandemic over yeah sure, all the sure. best we would love to look that oh. love we yeah. love to we love to go oh, to memphis wow. and nashville but uh, oh, thank yeah. you already for oh, yeah. 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 we we'll look forward thank yeah, you already yeah. for hosting thank this you. thank you arpita for reaching out and you know thank lovely you. conversation thank you yeah. thank you, yeah. you rishi yeah. brother much much thank love, you man. thank you stay good stay thank good you. we'll connect yeah yeah thank you yeah, yeah. thank you thank you so much rishi we will not allow you to leave because we will come up with few more songs you have to do that of course uh you guys not on rishi okay only thing is my 
whatever it is we are not doing like a, like a, that kind of a show so don't worry about it no 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 actually the thing is i i am not a just i don't just sit and sing you know i'm not i sing very internally otherwise i sing only when i have to sing i am more uh, i just noodle my on my guitar mostly otherwise i'm producing stuff so i i am not a guy who just can quickly sing 10 songs to sing songs you know i don't have those many songs in my basket but yeah if you tell me to perform maybe i can focus and then do that job on that particular night Okay. But I, uh, but you know what, Joy's uh, uh, Asami song reminded me. Uh, it's so soulful that you know that I I remembered a beautiful song a Bengali and I, a Bengali one. Yeah. Uh, uh, I may forget the, the words and all. I have I'm not I'm not used to singing these songs anymore. Very old. Still, I'm trying. Bhagdar ka tha paila pundi, paila mein nari poshi, suna mere chila, akbaraya to hila, to bhi paila naam to naam. Bhagdar ka tha paila pundi, paila mein nari poshi, suna mere chila. I don't remember the whole song that way, but just like I'm trying my best. <laughs> uh, do play anything Bollywood or anything, whatever comes to your mind. Okay, I'll also play another love song. But I can I sing in English? Yes, you, sure. You made me when I was a fool. You forget me in a jealousy as we walk into the door. So she took her love. For the day to night, a song to feel the body. It is all she said as a walking down. A long feel the body. A long to feel the body. A long to feel the body. Yeah. Thank you. That's <laughs> one. Yeah, just great voices, Joy. Great voices, but I know this platform is more of a chat show, and because we don't have that intense music arrangement set up, so uh, we have still yes, alive. exactly. It's such a nice uh, feeling and having you over to uh, with us here. Same here. But, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. It was and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is the uh, first time in this pandemic period that I'm actually. Doing something like this, <laughs> and I've been only seeing a lot of post people doing it all over. I'm not that I'm really very keen. I'm not so talkative generally. Uh, okay. Uh, but this so was a pleasure. You talk. <laughs> both of you hosting it so beautifully, and uh, you. you both have such pleasant smiles, and it makes it very easy and loose, and you know things. And Joy spoke so beautifully. It was such a such a beautiful experience for me. Yeah, this interview. Thank you. Uh, Rishi, Thank you, Rishi, for coming and joining us. Yeah, because uh, Arpita and um, um, Rishi, uh, yes, uh, I, we almost spent close to one hour forty-five minutes today. Yes, it's yeah. an ever-ending, ever-ending. I know. <laughs> That's what I yeah, told yeah, you. Yeah. Rishi sounds so good, and the questions and the, the these. I felt you know this time it was not uh, uh, like interview interview. It was like uh, you know a normal conversation we are having. And um, absolutely. Mm. Yeah, and we are enjoy enjoying. We were enjoying so much, and uh, yeah, I mean it was a great session. I. As I told you that I didn't want to end it, <laughs> but time. Yeah. But now we, we are almost have to wrap up. So here you go. 
Um, okay, I have been getting so many questions on the screen. I have to just uh, like sorry uh, because I keep checking on my phone. The phones have like requests coming, this coming, but uh, we can't accept like uh, everything at this point of time because you have they. It's an NRB news channel, and many people have heard you, Rishi. uh doing many uh, bengali uh, movie uh, directions and singing so they have the request like why uh, rishi is not uh, playing some bengali songs but uh, this is uh, i felt like the arrangements are not very proper and the music effect would not go that well we probably mm-hmm. will bring you again sometime with just hosting yes, a show we should, we should. we should because that will be just a show of a music and then not mm-hmm. a adda like that so the people will be more keen and look forward to seeing you so until then from nrb news arijit mm-hmm. and arpita uh once again thank you for accepting our request and coming over and giving your valuable time and talking to us arpita over to you wrap up Yeah. So from NRB News Twenty Four, uh, me uh, Arpita Garud and uh, Arijit uh, Basu, we are uh, saying bye, goodbye to you. Uh, just uh, log in to Facebook and check NRB News dot com page and like it and share it. Do comment so we can, you know, bring uh, more entertaining events uh, uh, on this platform. Thank you and um, wish you a good day and good night. Thank you. and before that uh, we also would like to tell our viewers every saturday we are coming up with the celebrity and we have already lined up for the coming 3 weeks with the uh, bollywood and the tollywood singers and actors, actors. so stay tuned yes stay yes. tuned stay tuned bye bye good night okay bye bye